God is and all the time we are gathered here as a university community for uh, this particular and uh, annual event whereby we are going to celebrate um, Cardinal Michael Morris Otunga who is one of the founders of our university and of course in the second part of uh, this event we are going to have our fundraiser. This day, today being the 3rd of November, is a historic uh, day for the university because in the year 1992 is when our university uh, got its uh, civil charter to operate as a private university. And therefore, we have a lot to celebrate. On the liturgical uh, aspect, Today we are commemorating St. Martin de Paul, uh, who was an apostle uh, to the poor. And Cardinal Otunga, uh, looking at his apostolic uh, undertakings, uh, certainly uh, we could also call him an apostle for the poor. Having said that, it is now my honor to uh, welcome and invite our Vice Chancellor and Director to preside over this Eucharistic celebration. Welcome, Father Rector. Thank you. Good afternoon. Before we start the Mass, I wish to bring the apologies of Archbishop Martin Kivuva, the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Mombasa. He was supposed to be the main celebrant, and he had gotten an emergency uh, held up, and uh, but he has pledged his a contribution to today's uh, fundraising, uh, which will be mentioned during the actual event. I also wish, uh, so he has asked me to celebrate the, the Mass on his behalf. So don't see me as a Vice Chancellor, look at me as an Archbishop. <laughs> Thank you very much. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come as a family of God to offer this sacrifice of thanksgiving, especially in honor of the servant of God, Cardinal Maurice Otunga, in honor of our university and especially in honor of our needy students of the university. We come here to bring that gesture of goodwill to them and for their own future. And now that the Lord may receive our gratitude and our intentions for this Mass, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most serious thoughts. Therefore, I ask the Lord for pardon, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to life everlasting.
let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift you are faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service. We pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. of the law. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this sentence. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is, is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song. It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends. It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends. It goes well for the man who deals generously and lends. It goes well for the man who deals, who deals generously and ends. It goes well for the man who deals generously and ends. It goes well for the man who deals generously and ends.
merciful and just. It goes well for the man who deals generously and the hand who conducts his affairs with justice. It goes well for the man who deals for the gospel attention. because the Spirit of God rests upon you. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, great multitude accompanied Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and take counsel, whether he is able with thousand to meet him who comes against him with the twenty thousand? And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an embassy, an embassy and asks terms of peace. So, therefore, 
whoever of you does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome to share to today's message, which is a message of charity, the message of giving back to God for what he has done in our own lives. Many years ago, I read a book titled, My Name is David, or I Am David. And this is a story about uh, a young family that were put in the Nazi concentration camp during the Second World War in Auschwitz. And uh, these were the places where so many people had been killed and were being killed. His parents were gassed and they died. And he was left in the concentration camp. And uh, he, there was a minister there or a priest who was also disguised, but he would always talk about uh, the Old Testament, the God of salvation. And what one time this young boy heard about David, who was a young boy who was able to rescue Israel and uh, became the, the winner of that favor of God to become the, the signature king of all the times. And that's why we want to rule like David. We want to be as good as David. And uh, what he did is that he started praying. And uh, one of the things he said is that, God, if you let me out of this concentration camp, I am going to, get to pay you something. I will owe you something. And lo and behold, after about uh, six or seven months, he was able to escape with a few other people, and he went out. And uh, he, on his runaway, he found an old lady on the way who was carrying a lot of luggage, and he decided to help him, to help her, and they carried the luggage to her house, and the lady told her, I want to give you food. I want to give you a place to stay. Please stay with me. And uh, David said, no, I will take nothing from you. And he said, but you are hungry. No. So David, in his mind, has said, I am paying God for what he did to me. So I cannot take any human reward from this act of generosity. And uh, his lifestyle as David continued like that. Whenever he was in trouble, he would ask God, if you do anything, I owe you. And whenever he did something good, he would always tell God, now since I had paid you what you, I owed you, now you, God, you owe me. And therefore, he had this economic relationship with God, ac accounting for God and wanting God to account for him. And uh, to David, every action was uh, related to God. It was God owing him or him being owed by g g him owing God. And uh, this story resonates very well with our celebration of today. Today we have come to, to honor the servant of God, Cardinal Morris Michael Otunga, who was a servant to the poor, a servant of justice, a servant of the Davids who are wandering around who did not have anything to eat. As you may read from his own, uh, from the writings about him, his option for the poor was unquestionable. His option for the needy was unquestionable. And God gave him a blessed life and made him his servant because of that generosity, the kindness, and the, the willingness to serve other persons 
rather than him, his own self. And therefore, we have come here to be the literal Davids uh, this afternoon for the Mass, because God has done so much for us. It is our time to, to give to others what we owe to God, and to be generous, and to be kind, and to be able to know to associate our Christian faith with the charity. And even as we read in the first reading of today, it was, uh, we, it was very wonderful, because St. Paul writing to the Philippians, the community of Philippians had pleased St. Paul so well. He was very emotionally attached to them. And he, they, they had treated him well. And he loved them. And he's giving them this fatherly or motherly instruction and advice and telling them that be a person of good things. And he also tells them that it, by charity, the law is fulfilled. And by doing this, he's referring to what I think we read on Sunday, where the greatest commandment here, O Israel, the Lord, your God is the Lord indeed. You shall love him with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your might, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And St. Paul, in an indirect manner, is telling about charity as the fulfillment and as the greatest commandment. And even when Jesus was asked the same, he talked about the same, that the greatest commandment is that love of God with everything, with all our traits, with all our passions, with all our belongings, and loving our, our neighbor as we love ourselves. And therefore, we have been told to be people who need to exercise that love. And as you know, even when you read Matthew chapter 25, when, when these people came and they, and to the kingdom of God, and they were separated like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goat. And he told those people, you go away from me because I was dusty. You gave me no water. I was a stranger. You never welcomed me. I was hungry. You never gave me food. All those issues that happened. But then to those on the right, he told them, come and enjoy your father's kingdom. Because I was hungry, you gave me food. I was a stranger. You gave me uh, accommodation. Even if we have to add what is happening today, I was poor. I did not have sufficient school fees. And you dug deep in your pocket and you made me study and, f and uh, complete my studies well. And uh, all that, the, I think in that man chapter is so categorical about the criteria for getting into heaven than any other part. And this criteria is based on charity. And therefore, God wants us to love and the, 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 the measure that will be, we measure unto others in goodness, in love, in care, and in provisions. This is exactly the measure that God will give to us. And I want to tell you that in my experience as a priest, and this is very true, I count very heavily from the poor and the needy. I will never I get an opportunity to visit the poor and the needy and the neglected. I try to support them. And I tell them, don't thank me, but just say a prayer for me. Because I think the... The, the spirituality of a Christian, the spirituality of a priest uh, should be heavily tied to that virtue of, of charity. Our even offering ourselves to the service of God in our religious life, in our priesthood, and yourself in the way that you offer as Christian families is our own sacrifice and offering to God in charity. And therefore, it is an act of charity. 
that cannot be distinct, cannot be confused with any other act. And therefore, by our personalities, the personality traits that we project to the society is that personality of the charity, of the goodness, and the love of God to humanity and demonstrating that salvation. In the gospel of today, you know, Jesus is telling us to look outward, out of ourselves, to project our faith outward. That's why he says, let us not concentrate only with our parents, with our children, with our property, with what we have, but let those assets help us to concentrate on the love of God that has been given to us. And that's why I say, if you do not hate all of those, if you do not take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. We know that the cross is the greatest, is the supreme, is the most supreme act of divine charity to humanity. Why did Jesus die on the cross? He died so that our sins may be remitted. Why did Jesus have to die on the cross? He died so that God can open the gates of heaven for us. Why did Jesus die on the cross? So that we may be called sons and, uh, and daughters of God and brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ and co-heirs to the kingdom of heaven. And therefore, the cross is the ultimate sacrifice of charity that can, will never be repeated and can never be matched with any other sacrifice that we make because it is transformed the image of humanity, the relationship of humanity with the God. And therefore, we can only celebrate in this sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ by carrying our own cross. We can only participate in a very, very small way in this sacrifice when we, we, we are charitable to other persons. We do not give because we have enough. The rich people don't, they cannot say they have enough that they cannot receive. And the poor people cannot say that they are so poor that they cannot give anything. Because we have so many resources in matters of time, in matters of treasure, in matters of talent. And all these things relate to who we are and to the capacities and the potentiality that we need to actualize in order to live our Christian life. So God does not tell us to hate our parents or our families, but he tells us we must be able to move beyond them to other people and to love them and to be good to them and to offer sacrifice to them. So may today's celebration, may today's fundraising remind us about David, that whatever we give, we know that God owes us something. It may not be on this earth, it may be in the kingdom of heaven to come. I always tell myself that when I go to heaven and I find a hostile angel at the gate, I will always say, hey, remember I was a priest. Remember the many masses I celebrated. Remember the ch small charities I may have done. So it is always good to go with a good uh, evidence to defend yourself in that kingdom. I am sure one day we should ask the lawyers to tell us the best defenses in heaven. But I think that the best defenses is the faith, is the love, is the charity that we expended on our brothers and sisters. And may it bring eternal life to us and may it bring joy and hope to the needy students that we continue to support in our institutions. 
in the last two years I have heard about the, I have heard their testimony, very moving testimony, how they wanted to drop out of school, how they had difficulties. But I wish to say that it is because of you that we do that. I don't want to say this is the only event that we do. Our chief guest professor, every Thursday, our staff give during the mass, and what they give goes to the needy students of our community. And therefore, we are not doing something new. We are perpetuating the benevolence and the charity that has been implanted into us as Koya family. May God bless us, and may we continue to do what is pleasing to God in charity, in humility, and in, in, in that justice, so that every time we do something good, it is for the salvation of souls. It is for the remediation on, and for the for the for for substituting their sufferings with the goodness and the joy and the, and the, and and the, and happiness in their lives may god bless us and through the intercession of the the servant of god cardinal morris otunga may our prayers rise like incense to god this afternoon in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit Let us rise for our prayers of the faithful. Dear brothers and sisters, gathered as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God, let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. Dear Lord, we thank you for our Mother Church and our Messiah. May all the consecrated members in Amasea region and throughout the world commit themselves to credible and prophetic witness to Christ by promoting true love, hope, charity, justice, peace, and solidarity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God our Father, grant that the decisions made by our civil leaders here in Kenya and in all nations, and most especially in the Conference of Parties 26, that the climate decisions may be guided by your Holy Spirit. Give them the wisdom and the grace to speak and act with honesty and integrity, and move them to care for the needs of those they govern. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Out of your love for your children, Lord, you brought this great institution into existence to serve their needs, and you have sustained it even in challenging moments. Consecrate each member of this institution in the truth that all your work for the good work, for the good of Kwea and the good of all who heed their services. Let's pray to the Lord. Lord On importance of the Father protect and bless our families, the sick and needy. May our families be ever be a shrine of your peace, love, 
faith and purity. Look upon our brothers and sisters who are sick and needy. May they be united with Christ who heals both body and souls. Let's pray to the Lord. O oh God, the creator and redeemer of all the faithful, grant to the souls of your departed servants the remission of all their sins, that through our prayers they may obtain pardon which they have always desired. Let's pray this to the Lord. Almighty God, these are the prayers of your faithful gathered here before you. We pray for our poor students, our needy students, that you are going to bless them through our benevolence. We also pray for the quick uh, beatification and canonization of the servant of God, Cardinal Maurice Michael Otunga, that through his prayers, through the prayers of the saints, our God may continue to be present to us. And may the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to the Lord, the Almighty God. To the praise of God. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For though you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Eleni fumbo la imani. As we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with the Bishop, Desig our, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bishop designate uh, Philip and all the clergy. Remember, also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other that sign of God's peace.
Lamb of God, behold, he who takes away the sins of the world. Happy and blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the mind, but only see the word and my soul. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting.
May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to celebrate our history as a university. Waswahili wanasema mkosa mila ni mtumwa. So tunajukumu la kutunza mila na desturi za wazee wetu zilizo jema. Na huyu uh, servant of God, mtumishi wa Mungu, Kardinali Michael Morris Otunga, ni kati ya wazee wetu kiimani ambao wametulea vema na hivi tumekusanyika siku ya leo kusherekea uh, kazi yao huduma yao kwa kanisa na sana sana uanzilishi wa chuo chetu kikuu so we thank almighty god for this uh, gracious moment i also take this opportunity to thank our vice chancellor and rector for having led us uh, uh, in this eucharistic celebration and also for having broken the word of God uh, for us. Uh, his message always kind of uh, penetrates into our hearts. We truly appreciate and we celebrate him as our father. Ata hiyo chasobo ameva. Si, si mnaona ata inameremeta. Very nice chasobo. Ni mimi ni memuazima. <laughs> but uh, uh, these are good symbols that help us to to pray well. We celebrate our priest who joined us, uh, the mass servers, uh, our choir, our dancers, uh, those who took the readings and the prayers of the faithful. Thanks so much for your availability and helping our community to uh, pray better. We are transiting to the next phase of our celebrations, so it's now my humble duty to invite um, the master of ceremony to let us know what happens next. Thank you. Uh, God is good, and all the time. God is good once again, and all the time. Thank you very much, Padre. All protocols observed. As we all know, our event today is going to have three parts. We, have, uh, we are coming to the tail end of the first part, which is the Memorial Mass. Uh, we are moving to the second part. The transition is going to be very quick, where we are going to have a public lecture and uh, one or two speeches from our leaders, after which we'll move to the fundraiser. And therefore, it is my humble request to all of us that we kindly take a very short health break, then we come back, take our seats. By that time, we believe that the uh, main celebrant and the concelebrant will have divested and they will also join us back in the hall. Uh, after which, we also request the various champions who are selected to lead in the fundraising in the various departments of the university to kindly prepare and be available so that when we start the fundraising after the memorial lecture, you will be available to present the contribution from our various departments. It is our call that we do not leave immediately after. This is a noble event, like we have been informed, was started as early as 2005, and it has been of great help to many of our students. And therefore, to all of us, let us be there to encourage one another, to support one another, and to contribute generously to this noble cause. So please, let's take a short break, and then we come back. Uh, immediately after the last hymn, we kindly request the choir to take their position and start with the entertainment. Karibuni sana. 
The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.